all of us were talking about it because it was really dry. It was the years of the drought. So we're over 90 degrees for a month and a half. There's no rain at all. The winds are high. The trees are screaming for moisture. It's just terrible. There were signs up on the road about how dry and how dangerous it was. Uh, you know, people were doing all kinds of things, even neighbors walking the trails, trying to make sure nobody was out here smoking. And all of us were talking about it. And sure enough, you know, I don't think they ever found the person, but they believe that someone did with a cigarette set this fire. We've had quite a few fires that have occurred here, and they've uh, usually happened in August, September, October, and November. Uh, we usually have uh, high temperatures, uh, dry grasses, low humidity, lots of wind. Once you have uh, uh, some kind of a cause for that fire, it takes off and really blows up quick. This particular fire happened in uh, the year 2000, uh, started September the 5th, lasted about seven days because of the topography, the high temperatures and the dry grasses, it became extreme. Yeah, it was in September on a Friday afternoon and my husband Jack and I saw the smoke from Walker Ranch. So we went to check on it and knew that there was a fire, called 911 and came home and immediately started watching the whole fire scape along the ridge of the mountain, not too far from us, began to explode. We evacuated our animals for fear that the fire might overtake us in the night. Saturday, the winds took it toward Denver and blocked our view of Denver, created enormous smoke, lots of planes flying and people trying to get out, a full evacuation of all the homes beyond us. We're in a position at the top of a ridge of a mountain and our home was the first home in danger as the fire came from Myers Gulch. The fire department was convinced if they lost us, they would lose all the houses below us. Fire department camped in our front pasture. Uh, the fire trucks lined the road right in front of us to be available to try to stop the fire. But then Saturday night it blew back, uh, back again towards the mountains. And as we woke up Sunday morning, it was coming straight at us. By Sunday afternoon, it was pretty apparent to us that there was no stopping it. The air was full of smoke and the sun was totally blacked out. Fire was by then in Myers Gulch, which is right across the street. And as it came this way, it blocks the road. And so everyone, including the fire crews, had to evacuate because once the fire crosses the road, then it's not safe for anyone to leave. We pulled out and we went up the road about a mile. And there's a giant boulder just off the road. And so we're sitting up there watching the house disappear from view. And eventually it got dark enough the planes had to leave. So we assumed that night that the house was lost. The fire department actually called us about midnight at a friend's house and said that the winds had turned back and the house was saved. There were no homes lost. That's what made this fire kind of outstanding given the fact that it grew so fast and so intense. Well, I think fire mitigation was actually very huge and maybe the only reason that our house and scores of other homes were saved. The fire department had done a controlled burn across the road from us in Myers Gulch and that of course meant that there was a lot less fuel. Before we did the prescribed burn, we did, for, we did some forest mitigation. We went in and thinned the trees, uh, burned the slash piles, and got rid of the firewood and the materials from the trees. And so when this fire took off and uh, burnt this area over here, it jumped the road. And uh, because of this area being thinned and uh, forest mitigation happening here earlier, they knew that they could send crews in here and do it in a safe manner and they were able to hit it with slurry bombers and with fire crews and knock the fire down and do it uh, safely. And between the uh, weather and good firefighting techniques and the mitigation that took place here, they were able to uh, control the fire. We moved to Colorado from California. When we were looking around, we fell in love with the mountains, the view, the beauty, and so we just felt like it was the right place for us. It continues to be a very popular you know, place for people to want to live in Colorado. This is the kind of place that they want to live. You have to, you know, to realize that you need to do your work around your home and work with your community to do everything that you can to make it fire defensible. Community up on a mountain is codependent in many ways. We have giant snow up here. We've had a seven foot snow in one day. 
We are always at forest fire risk, and so we talk a lot about safety and fire mitigation protection. But a lot of the homeowners get with their fire protection district and they hire mitigation crews to come in and work on their properties. And some homeowners will do it on their own and others will do it through contractors. Part of the, the history of fire up here is we prevented forest fires for so long that there are more trees per acre than there originally is when we weren't controlling the fires. What we have to do is protect from all the surrounding forest. So if there was ever to be a fire, uh, prevent the fire from getting from where the fire is to the big trees around the house we want to protect. So this is kind of, uh, kind of a spot where we want to be able to do some thinning, uh, both on this side of the road and the other side of Flagstaff Road. You can see that, uh, that the uh, ponderosa pine and Doug fir are growing very close together. I think in this case right here, most of these homeowners up here know that they're living in a, a wildfire situation, but they choose the privacy over the endangerment of their homes. But the downside of that is, is that it creates a problem for the rest of the people that live in the area. Well, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> you know, to make things better, you have to remove a lot of the trees. Um, Nobody wants that because everybody moves up into the mountains for the trees. Well, if you have wildland fire equipment or personnel or people trying to get out of the area, this becomes a bottleneck. From a fire mitigation standpoint, you can only do so much. Of course, if I could you know, work with that neighbor and achieve the results we want, things would be better. We all want to be good neighbors and help each other, check on each other when the weather's bad, and also hopefully create a neighborhood where we're able to manage, if at all possible, fire risk by helping each other out and doing the smart things to protect our homes. Fire never leaves us in terms of a memory. You can still see uh, in our lifetime, the mountains will not have trees again where the fire occurred. And so it makes you really appreciate how fragile the environment is and our responsibility to try to do our part to take care of it.